While everyone knows there are 50 ways to leave your lover, not everyone knows there are four ways to safely and legally fly a VOR approach. I'm going to show you all four ways how to do it at the example of the VOR Alpha approach into Asheboro, North Carolina. To preempt the next question, why would anyone want to go to Asheboro? The answer is, of course, to go to the zoo. So if you want to go to the zoo at Asheboro and want to land there using a VOR approach, you'll be flying the VOR Alpha approach, which is a circling only approach, which means it does not lead to a runway. It is not a straight in approach to a specific runway, but it leads you to a point from where you must conduct a visual maneuver to land on um, one of the available runways. The VOR Alpha approach starts uh, the initial approach fix, the Greensboro VOR 116.20. And as we can see here in the briefing strip, I'm going to skip the first line because we're not talking to anybody. That is also the uh, VOR we are going to use for the approach which provides the final approach course. So 116.2, the Greensboro VOR, the final approach course 173. So we are flying outbound on the 173 radial. The minimum altitude at the final approach fix natal is 3000 and after natal we can descend down to the minimum descent altitude which for a category A aircraft is 1320 feet. The airport elevation we don't really care for purposes of the approach because it's not a straight in approach. In case of the missed approach we fly a climbing right turn to 3000 feet and then inbound back to the Greensboro VOR on the 173 radial, which is the same radial that we came on, to the natal intersection, which is the same that we had for the final approach fix, where we conduct the missed approach holding. It's a published holding with right hand turns, timed legs, and it's on the 173 radial, which means when we are coming back after our missed approach turn, we will need to conduct a parallel entry to join the missed approach holding. So as you can see here on the plan view, after the initial approach fix, which is the Greensboro VOR itself, we continue on the 173 radial until we pass Chale, which is um, defined by the 2904 crossing radial of the Liberty VOR under 13.0, which I have on the number two nav receiver. Then the next point is the final approach fix, Nadal, which is defined by the 257 crossing radial of the Liberty VOR. And when we pass Nadal, we're going to start the timer, fly 90 knots, time 3 minutes and 16 seconds, descending down to 1320. And when, the th uh, when we are holding 1320 feet and the 3 minutes 16 seconds at 90 knots have elapsed, we are at the missed approach point. If we haven't seen the runway by then, we go missed. As you can see, the intermediate fix and the final approach fix are defined by crossing radials, while the missed approach point is not. And the reason for that is the Greensboro VOR uh, is surveyed to serve this approach, even though we are very low here, 1320, um, by the time we are at the missed approach point, we are clearly outside the published uh, service volume, but since the approach has been surveyed and certified to work, we know that we're going to be able to receive the 173 radial of Greensboro VOR. It's going to work. What has not been surveyed to work is the Liberty VOR, which in theory we might could use to uh, define the missed approach point by a crossing radial, but since we are not guaranteed to receive it, we cannot define the missed approach point by a crossing radial. Instead, we're going to time it. Pass natal, start to timer, fly 3 minutes 16 seconds at 90 knots. And if we don't see the runway by then, commence the missed approach procedure. That completes our approach briefing. I'm going to um, make the chart a little smaller now so that you can see everything that's going on in the cockpit. Most importantly, the stopwatch, which we're going to use. Oh, yep, that's going to work. And now let's unfreeze the simulator and start flying the approach. So as you can see, we are on the 173 radial. I have the um, Greensboro VOR on the number one. Let's identify it. So we are looking for 
long, long, short, 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 long, long, long. That's good. Greensboro VOR identified. Liberty VOR number two. And Liberty VOR also identified. So we are about to cross Chale. Chale is the 294 crossing radial of the Liberty VOR, which I have on the number two CDI. As soon as the number two CDI centers, we have passed Chale which of course doesn't do much to our vertical profile since the minimum altitude here is 3000 and it's not going to change until then. All right, number two CDI is centered. We have passed chain. Let's go down to actually 3000. And the next crossing radial that we need is the final approach fix needle 257 radial from Liberty. Alright, 3000 until Nadal. Uh, let's check the number 2 CDI here. Does that look like 257? Yeah, that looks like uh, 257 to me. So, when the CDI number 2 centers, we are past needle. I'm going to start the timer. Let's put the stopwatch in ET in lapse time mode. So as soon as we cross this radial, I'm going to start the timer. I'm going to try and maintain 90 knots. 90 knots for 3 minutes and 16 seconds. And when this time has elapsed and we don't see the runway, we'll start the missed approach. And of course, coming up to the final approach fix, it's a good idea to run the gums check. So let's check our fuel. Fuel looks good. Um, fuel selectors in both. So gas, undercarriage. Well, the undercarriage is down and welded. Nothing to check here on the 172. Uh, the mixture is full rich. The prop setting, well, doesn't exist on the 172. The flaps, um, we're going to fly with uh, flaps one from final approach point and switches let's make sure that the uh, landing lights are on pedo heat is on yep looks good so I'm actually going to set uh, flaps one now 10 degrees of course airplane's going to balloon a little bit the autopilot has caught that. That's good. And I'm going to try to just set the power so we are flying 90 knots. Which, by the way, I can. It's outside the green arc, but the green arc is uh, just for flaps um, 20 and full. So even though 90 is outside the green arc, I can fly 90 knots in flaps 1, perfectly fine. And since the autopilot will now have me trip perfectly for 90, um, when we start the descent, all I really need to do is disconnect the autopilot, uh, bring the power back, and since we're already flying 90 and we're trimmed for 90, um, that should make it very easy to maintain 90 knots for 3 minutes and 16 seconds, which is uh, the timing we're looking for.
as you can see now, the CDI number 2 is moving. So we are approaching the 257 radial of the Liberty VOR. And uh, when the CDI passes through the center, that's our indication we have passed the final approach fix. We start the timer, disconnect the autopilot, start the descent down to 1320, and keep an eye on the stopwatch and go missed at uh, 3 minutes 16 seconds. CDI is about halfway centered, about halfway there. So during the final approach segment, uh, my attention will be on the number one CDI um, for lateral tracking on the alt uh, altimeter, of course, so that I don't bust MDA, and on the stopwatch to wait for the tightest approach point. About to center, like maybe a degree more, almost there. All right, that's what I call centered. Stopwatch started, autopilot is off. We are trimmed for 90 knots, so bring back the power and start to descend to 1320. The airplane is trimmed to hold 90 knots and I'm just going to fly 90 knots for 3 minutes 16 seconds. That's really all there is to it. at about six to seven hundred feet per minute descent rate which is what we want to see for the mist uh, for the non-precision approach all right we've been doing this for one minute now looking for 316. We are now about 1,000 above minimum. Still got another 1,000 feet to lose. Glancing over to the number one CDI, we seem to be slightly left of course. Slightly left in correcting. 90 knots. 90 knots and 600 feet per minute descent. Lightly to the left and correcting. Coming up on our minimum, remember 1320 circling minimum. We're ready to add power and catch this. Here we are. We're at about three minutes now, so we can fly another 16 seconds. Ten seconds. Three minutes 16, no runway in sight, going around, full power. Flaps up. Power and flaps up, starting the right turn, the right climbing turn to 3000. Of 
as you can see the airplane climbs like crazy it's very lightly loaded we have only half full tanks and I've said wait for only one person so of course it's 180 horsepower 172 it climbs very good under these conditions Climbing right turn to 3000 and we're going to re-intercept the radial, same radial that we came on. So it's slightly more than 180 degree turn. Puts us right about here. And now, since I have not changed the number one CDI, I'm now looking at reverse sensing. So I'm, to the, I'm flying to the right of my course because the needle is off to the left. I have not changed the OBS setting. I'm now flying the same course inbound that I've been flying outbound. The reason I'm not changing, and of course I should keep climbing, the reason I'm not changing the CDI around, and uh, people might have a different opinion on that, is because I need the CDI on the 173 setting for the mist approach holding. So as you can see the needle is centered now and now I'm just going to fly there you go now I'm on the radial and on the heading I want to be needle is centered heading is where I want it to be and at 3000 I'm just going to turn on the autopilot alright I'm not going to actually enter the holding um, the question where is the holding where would it start is obviously um, it's defined by the crossing radial so the holding um, and in our case the, the parallel entry procedure starts when the CDI number two centers again, because that is what defines the needle intersection. The needle intersection is defined by the crossing radial. All right, I'm not actually going to do all this. Let's uh, try the next safe and legal way to fly a VOR approach.